Are you wondering how you can create a project timeline in Excel? Well, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to be showing you three different methods that you can use to be able to do so. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, the first option is using something known as SmartArt Graphics. Now, depending on what version of Excel you're using, you may not be able to do this. So I do recommend following along to the other methods in this video. But assuming you're using one of the later versions of Excel, then the smart art graphics are probably one of the best uh, options for creating your project timeline. So in order to, to create one, you have all you need is an empty Excel sheet. On the top ribbon, if you click insert and then click smart art, from here you want to click process and that will filter the graphics down and what you want to be looking for here is the basic chevron process and if you read this it says use to show a progression such as a timeline and that's what we're after so if you hit ok now this is going to bring your default uh, view now what you can do here is when you when you look at the layouts at the top i like to change it to the basic timeline so this is what you're looking for and once you do so if i click that then it's going to give you this default timeline view now you can change the styles at the top here and that's obviously going to come down to your preferences uh, i quite like that one i'm going to click there and here we go so now we have our timeline and all you need to now do is you basically just need to enter your text so this could be milestone one you could even put a date in here, let's say today. And then you would move on to the next one. You get the idea. So that's the timeline graphics. You can change the formatting, you can change colors. And yeah, you can. there's quite a few different options in that uh, ribbon and in the smart art graphics section. So that's the first way. Um, but you may be after something a little bit different, maybe something a little bit more complex. So onto the second way, and that's with a scatter plot uh, or scatter diagram. And what I've done here is I've just created a, uh, a basic project plan. I've put in some random tasks and believe it or not, Jason Donovan is the project manager on this project. And what we're going to do here is you can see I've just put it in some dummy data. Uh, random date starting from today recorded on the 24th of September which is why I've chosen it and we've basically just added you know a, a one day duration for each of the different tasks so hopefully we'll finish this project on the 13th of October that but that's not when we're gonna you know finish creating a project timeline in Excel that would be mental so what we're gonna do here is to create the scatter plot graph I'm gonna select all of the cells I'm, I'm then going to go back to the insert ribbon. So if it's not selected by default, click that up here. And then we need to go on to, you can actually select it from this option here. But if you can't find it, you can click on recommended charts, all charts. This is the long way of going about finding it. And then you look for the XY scatter. And if you click that, then you have different options up the top here, just how it's going to basically present itself. Hit OK and you're going to have your chart. So I'm gonna move this over here. And as you can see, we've got the start and end date expressed as a timeline uh, on a kind of vertical and horizontal timeline. And this is completely customizable. You can change the names of the charts. You can even, um, you know, you can change various different elements of how it looks and yeah, you and the colors as well. So one of the benefits of working from uh, something like this or, or the scatter graph in particular is if you were to go in here and start changing some dates so if i put this as um, the 26th then it, you can see that it's responsive so it's moved so you can see the blue has now moved obviously if we started labeling this the blue would be the start date and the orange would be your end date but if you were to work if i just quickly change that back but if you were to work with some you know larger dates you'll start to see um, when I say large dates, sorry, more time in between dates, you'll start to see how it kind of jumps around a lot more. Um, it's, you, yeah, you can see the differences because we're working with a one day duration. They're very close together. But this is a good way of seeing the differences between, you know, your start and end dates. And it's a good way to represent your data in a timeline. Now, the third way and the final way that we're going to cover today is with a Gantt chart. 
Again, Jason Donovan is project managing this. So I've got a blank project plan in front of me now, um, but you know, you can, you can set up basically a, a project plan to meet the needs of your particular project. Um, these tasks obviously don't have to be the same. What I've done here is I've started with a blank slate, so I haven't put any dates in yet because I just want to show you how you can kind of do this yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a start date of again today. And for our end date, we're going to do, um, we are going to do equals the start date plus three. And we're going to put in the 26th here. And I'm going to put equals, this is going to be, you know, five days. So you get the idea, we're getting some dates in here. So duration equals the start date minus the end date. No, it doesn't. Apologies. It's the end date minus the start date. So three days, five days, etc. Now I'm actually just going to put in some, some random dates here. Um, let's put 01, 10, 10, 10, 15, 10. This is taking me a while. Uh, no, we don't want it to be that. And we're going to do that. And then 25th of 11. Um, actually, I'm going to get rid of the project launch and execution because I don't want to sit here and for you to watch me enter dates, that would be rather boring. So get rid of those. You get the idea, though. We've got all our dates in here. Um, and what happens if I drag this down? Perfect. We've got some dates in here and we could probably drag this down as well, actually. Uh, five, that looks right. Three, perfect. Okay, so we're in. So start date equals, start date equals here. End date equals the end date of the project. So 30th November, start on the 24th September. This is a long, long project to create a, a Gantt chart. Project duration equals the end date minus the start date. So we have a 60 day duration. So let's create the Gantt chart. So what you want to do here is you want to put your start date. So that would be the 24th of September. Now I'm going to format this to make it a little more, um, you know, to stand out a little bit. We're going to put that in uh, orange. That's quite, yeah, that, that will do. I'm actually going to format the cells and I'm going to change the alignment so it kind of goes up like that you'll see and then what I'm going to simply do here is drag it along so now we've got 24th 25th 26th 27th you get the idea um, you could if you wanted to change your Gantt chart to be on a on a monthly or quarterly you would just change this to this could be September this could be October November or as I say if you do quarterly it would be you know I've got to think of my quarters now January February March so that'd be Q1 eight uh, April, you know, you get the idea. But let's just bring this across for now, just to show you that the concept in action, I'm bringing it right the way across. And now to create the Gantt chart, and this will give you your timeline view, you just need to enter a formula. So I'm going to actually show you that formula right now. So you can follow this along. So we're going to use the if formula. So equals if. Now, it needs to be an and because we want to set up two different um, arguments to, to get this to work as intended. So e equals if open brackets and open brackets. So if the date in I nine, so if, if the start date, if the 24th of September is greater or equal to the start date here, plus the second part of this argument is equals is sorry I so the same again oh so I nine is less than or equal to the end date close bracket comma we want to put an X in here and if it hasn't got that so if the value is false we want that to be blank so here we go so we've got an X so basically that implies you know if this date is is in between these two dates, then we have an X. Now, what we want to be able to do here is we want to drag this along. We don't want to put this formula in every single cell that would take forever. That would give us our 67 days project duration. So what we want to do here is if we put a few dollar signs in, 
then that basically tells the formula that we can, you know, it, it basically keeps it in place and enables you to drag down and doesn't change the syntax of the formula. So we need we need one in there, and then again we'll need one in between the this, and then we need one at the start of this. Now what that enables to do, as I say, is drag it down and across. So if I drag it down and across. You can see all of the X's are coming in here now, and that's basically giving us our, you know, timeline view. Now, one thing you want to do here is you want to change the, the, the formatting. So right click, format cells. Now, what we want to do here, not this, sorry. We need data, we need conditional formatting. So I need to find that. So, uh, Conditional formatting, where is that? Here we go in the home, sorry. So conditional formatting, now we want to go um, manage rules, so new rule. So formats, format all cells based on their values. So format only cells that contain, that's what we want. So if the cell value is equal to X, then apply a, a fill, we want the background to be, let's say green in this example, okay? And then we want to format, and we don't want the font to have any color. So I'm gonna change the font as well to a green. And in doing so, okay, okay, and apply. Then as you can see, we have our timeline in the Gantt view. So we've basically created a Gantt chart here from a project plan. Now, one of the beauties of doing this is that as I've set this up as formulas and we've got start and end dates, if I start changing this, so if I put the 26th, 09, you will see that the Gantt chart is responsive and it updates as you update your project plan. So if we put this to 10, uh, if I change that to 2909, you start to see it changing accordingly. So that's your Gantt chart. So they're the three different ways to create a project timeline in Excel. As I say, the timeline graphics is probably your easiest. Scatter plot also can be can be a nice view as well. But the Gantt chart is probably, you know, as a project manager, one of the best ones. It's probably what you your stakeholders are expecting. And as you can see, it's also responsive as well, which I, I particularly like. So I hope this video was useful. If it was, please hit the like button. Um, that tells me to carry on creating videos like this. Uh, it keeps Jason Donovan in a job. Um, and if you could subscribe to my channel, then you, or if you do, then you will get more videos just like this and you can, yeah, learn, learn as much as you can. So with that said, I hope you have an excellent day.